my name is Naomi Maddox. I am in sixth grade and for my science fair project I'm going to show you how to extract DNA from strawberries. DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid is basically the instructions for all living things. It's stored in the nucleus of the cell and it will, it's made up of the units A, C, T, and G. They they bond using using the phosphate group and that'll create a chain. And then DNA is made up of one, but it's made up of not one but two chains. And how DNA gets its spiral shape, it's called a a double helix actually. It is from proteins that surround it because of their opposite charges and it'll compress it into a chromosome. Chromosomes are stored in the nucleus. I made a demonstration of what a plant cell looks like. And how we're going to get to the nucleus of the strawberries to get the DNA out is that we're going to have to destroy the cell wall and a little yellow line. I don't know if you can see it, but that is the cell membrane. And then there's the nuclear membrane. The cell wall is made up of glue of a rigid sugar layer or cellulose. It will be broken once I pulverize the strawberries but the nuclear membrane and the cell membrane are made of, of phospholipids that will be destroyed by the soapy, salty mixture that I have here. So first, of course, I'm gonna destroy the strawberries. I have to make sure they're masked up good before I add my solution. Once I think that they're good enough, and that all of the little plant cells are exposed, and I'll add it. Okay, I have off camera mashed up all the strawberries into this little pole. It's to expose the cell wall as I have stated. Now, this is the solution that I'm going to add. I've broken the cell wall. Now, I, this is going to destroy the membranes because soap, as you can see here, it's similar in structure to a phospholipid. They create these bilayers where the non-polar tails are all connected facing away from the polar heads. But soap only has one non-polar tail, so it likes to form these spears. But since they're so similar, they want to react. So the soap will, will want to pluck the phospholipids away from the bilayer and into these little micelles. So now I'm just gonna really mix it in. This doesn't look like much is going on. So, <laughs> but this is one of the most important parts of it. I'm destroying both membranes until all the contents of the nucleus spill out. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> And what the, what the chilled isopropyl alcohol is for, it is, it is going to separate the DNA from everything else. I'm gonna do this a little bit. So that we can just have the DNA float to the top in this little white liquid. And you can see here, it's gotten kind of red too. I'd say that this mixing should be hopefully enough and I'm just gonna strain it so all of the gunk kind of gets out. Okay, while well, the video cut away, I strained the strawberry mixture to a metal strainer and then a cloth. And now that we have everything in here, the DNA is not separated but it's all spilled out. So to separate it we're using 91% isopropylene alcohol. It's quite common in chemistry to use as a separatory. Like you put it in a separatory funnel. And now if we mix it around we will start seeing some white stuff float to the top. And you can already see it. Wow. And what's the white stuff? It is the DNA. It's sticking together in the clumps. And the reason why we added the salt is to get off all of the proteins that were compressing it. And you can see it right there. Wow. Yeah. Processes like these are used in a multitude of things in the real world, such as forensics at crime scenes. 
microbiology and in medicine to identify genes related to cancer and other health conditions. And that's it. And we have it right here. So cool. That's awesome. One How about of the reasons that we're using strawberries? You can technically extract DNA from any living thing. It's also common to extract DNA from something like a pea or chicken liver. But DNA, I mean, but strawberries are really good because they're super easy to break up compared to peas and chicken livers where you have to use a blender. And because they have a kind of and in some foods that we eat and some vegetables and fruits, sometimes the chromosomes will have eight versions of them. They will be times by eight, like in strawberries. For potatoes, I think it's four. And yeah, so per, per shell, a strawberry will have more DNA and chromosomes in it than a human or a chicken liver. That's one of the reasons. So yeah. That's How about really some cool. fun facts? Oh yeah, you can just read them off here. I'm not reading them for you. <laughs> yeah, this is really cool. Oh, that was wonderful. Yeah, Thank you, Naomi. All of the supplies that you need to do this at home, minus the strainer and the cloth and all of the containers. Awesome.